Can you reflect on the state of race today relative to back then? It's worse. It's worse than I've ever seen. Is, it, is that right? Yeah, it's scary. And of course, you you hear everything. It gets to the point where sometimes I can't even watch television because it's one that racial attack after the other. And you're so aware of it. You're more. It's there. It's constant. So I think it's worse. How did you maintain hope throughout all of that? On a daily basis and through my religion. I'm a practicing Catholic. So you still participate in the Christian oh, yes. rituals, oh, yes. right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. For me, as a scientist, I was getting skeptical around age 9, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. It was just weird hearing someone tell me under what conditions you go to hell. So did it concern you that I was drifting? No, I just said, be quiet and listen. <laughs> That's all. And we'd still go to Mass and you'd go to Mass. Yeah, yeah, I still And you go. made your First Communion, made your Confirmation. Right, right. I still go. I mean, I had no, you know, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. So it's that's not, what it was. Right. I said, just stay awake, please. <laughs> just stay awake. I didn't know this at the time. I didn't know to appreciate it at the time. But that every conversation, every conflict had foundations in rational discussion. You did this. Why did you do this? And what was your intent and here's the cause this is not a good outcome do it differently next time there was a, it wasn't just do this because i say because mm -hmm. that's where does that lead you and i wonder if that promoted my early sense of curiosity because if something happens in a particular way you want to know the reason for it mm -hmm. but if your whole life is do this because i'm the adult and i know better and you don't mm -hmm. do it then it's a life of of following commands rather than a life of exploring what it is one should do and why. Mm -hmm. So where did you, you and dad get this from? Because we visit friends, parents, and I see the parents, it's like, whoa, I'm glad I don't live in this house. <laughs> whoa. Well, the father would be sitting at the end of the table back in the day when fathers were, mm -hmm. you know, patriarchs, and no one would say, talk back to the father, and no one would, yes, sir, and no, sir. And I'm thinking, Where's the conversation? He just said something that wasn't quite right. Who is, who's gonna challenge that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I, I kept it to myself because I'm mm -hmm. visiting other families. But in our family, everybody could say anything to anybody, basically. As long as you weren't insulting them. And insulting, right. I mean, yeah. right, still respectful, but not. Of course. But, uh, if you said something that wasn't <laughs> quite right, mm -hmm. I'm coming back at you. Mm -hmm. And then we we resolved that. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I appreciated that. In a low tone of voice. Yeah. No one ever raised their voice. Right, plus the, no one ever carried grudges. That's for sure. You leave right. that table loving each other. Right. No, no, no matter how many bochinches, you know, bochinches is a Puerto Rican word for, for confusion and stuff. Mm -hmm. No matter how many bochinches were at the table, you leave it at the table and go forth. And, and no, you didn't dissuade anything mm -hmm. at all. You and dad, whatever we did, it was let's explore this. Mm -hmm. And so that was always fun. Mm -hmm. And you'd even take it another step. Mm-hmm steps that we didn't know was a next step to take. Right, that's important. Right, because you had some sense of how societies work and agencies right. work. Right. And when I was attending classes at the Hayden Planetarium in middle school, and I took some advanced class mm -hmm. for adults of the youngest kid in the class, at the end, this man comes up to me that's who was right. in the class and handed me his business card. Right, right. And I don't know anything about business cards. What, like, what is this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then I took it home and showed you, and you said, he's director of education at the Explorers Club. Mm -hmm. And we should call this and find out if there are opportunities. I would have known to do, to do that. But you guys are very plugged into- Oh, I called that guy immediately. And, and right, and that's that. when I got a scholarship. And then I went to Africa to view a total eclipse. And Because so, of the- Explorer, Because of that scholarship. Explorer. And I, I, to, to this day, I would thank, like to thank him again. Yeah, Vernon, you Vernon you were, Gray. You were not able to locate him. Uh, I. I tried mm -hmm. later on. I don't know what, what happened. I would like to thank him profusely. We can put his name, Vernon Gray. Was yeah, the, the doors of, that he opened for you was fantastic. Right. Is there any 91 years of parenting wisdom you can just share? Well, I can tell you this much. I'm, I feel sorry for parents of today because all you see, even toddlers walking around with hands held objects in their hand and everybody's clicking and everybody's clicking and they're not talking to each other. They're talking away from each other. They can be in the same room corresponding with each other with these doggone hand handheld devices. And I think a stop should be put to it in, in the home, particularly at meal times, and particularly in schools, because they're embarrassing each other, they're hurting each other. It's a very painful experience of some of these kids, and I think it's a tragedy. Okay, so that's what not to do. 
That's right. Can you have advice of what to do? Yes, listen to an educational programs such as Star Talk, <laughs> and such as Nova. <laughs> Go back to the old ways of doing things. Yes, they can fool around with their handhelds, but not 100% of the time. They walk up and down with them. Often parents, if they have kids who are accomplished, they're very proud and they'll sort of talk about him mm -hmm. and, and that's my boy, that's my daughter, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You never really behave that way. Never, ever. For us. That's right. Like I do something really great and you say, oh, that's nice. You know, you're late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't view it as negative. I just viewed it as these are my, I'm following my interests right. and I'm not doing it to get praise. Right. And nor did you offer praise. Well, yeah, sometimes I praised you for the specific things, particularly sometimes how you handle people. I'm always concerned about how you handle people, mm -hmm. how you talk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I have praised you. No, but so, but in general, I don't remember the household being one where you or dad were continuously praising us. Content, right, yeah, absolutely right. Okay, was there some thinking behind that? No, we just let you do your own thing, and we, we never talked about it. Why? Because it was for us. It was natural. If you're on a if you're on a prescribed course and you're sticking to it, then we're happy about that, and we leave it alone. Of all the things I've done, is there something that you think most about or most highly? Your about? books. My books. I think your books will be a part of your legacy. Oh, okay. Programs, you know, can fade away, but your books, I think, will carry on. Okay. Yeah, particularly in foreign languages. I think that's very important. Mm, yeah, yeah. They've, been, yeah, so that, they've enjoyed that, many translations. Yes, yes. So I think that's very important, and I'm very pleased about that. And in my very latest book, mm -hmm. Letters from an Astrophysicist, right. it's dedicated to you and Dad. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if you knew that. That's nice. No, I didn't. And the dedication to you was, um, it was a thank you for first teaching me how to say what I mean. Mm -hmm. when I write. Right. And I remembered we would write letters together to achieve certain things. Yeah. It could be anything, a product yeah. failure, and you had to go back and get a yeah. refund or whatever, and it required a letter to the customer service. Mm -hmm. There was an entire way that words would go to a page to communicate an idea, an intent, a, 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 in search of a conclusion. And I got all that from you. Yeah, yeah. So where did you get it from? I don't know, it was just there. Was it a, whole, a lifetime of complaining to the world when stuff didn't go the way <laughs> Well, I do write good complaint letters. There's no two ways about it. It's who, what, why, when, and where. And that's the end of that. So I dedicated my next book to you. Okay. Letters from an Astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. To you and Dad. Okay. And so to my mother, who first taught me how to write with meaning and impact. And to my father, whose life experience navigating people, places, and things conferred upon me the necessary wisdom to navigate a life of my own. Oh, nice. That's nice, Neil. That's very nice. Dad would have liked that very much. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Mom. Thank you, Neil, son. <laughs> <laughs>